In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a multimodal embeddings with Langchain in Node.js. So multimodal embeddings is a new model that was recently released by Google on their Vertex AI platform, which is currently within a preview. Now, just yesterday, there was also a wrapper within Langchain that was released, which I'm leveraging to make this even simpler. So the thing with the multimodal embeddings uh, model is that you can include both a combination of text and images. So you can query for uh, images based on text or text based on images or images on images and, and what have you. So it gives you a whole lot of flexibility and it also gives you that nice ability to have it all contained within one uh, vector database or vector location. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a Google Cloud account. If you don't have one, you'll be able to get some free credits likely off the bat. Uh, very simple to sign up. Just go through the flow. Once you've signed up, simply head over to your console, uh, click the drop down here, create a new project. And then once it's created, make sure to hop over to your dashboard and just enable all the recommended APIs for Vertex AI. So once you've done that, I encourage you just to go to this link here. I'll put it within the description and just follow these setup steps. So this took me a couple attempts to make sure that it was all working correctly. Essentially what you have to do, you have to download the G Cloud CLI. So pick your operating system, download that. And then once it's downloaded, you can run this login from your terminal and you'll have a browser window pop up. You'll log in uh, Google and you'll have a success message in your browser and terminal. So once you have that all set up, you can pop back in to VS Code and I'll show you everything you need to do from scratch. So essentially uh, what you'll do off the bat is you'll just npm init dash y. What that will do will be, it will create this package JSON here. Now, once you're within the package JSON, uh, you won't have uh, a handful of these things, but I want you to first add this type module because we're gonna be using imports. And then I also want you to NPM install these two things, which I'll just briefly touch on. So Langchain is likely self-explanatory, but uh, this F-A-I-S-S -S is Facebook AI Similarity Search. So this is what we're going to be using as essentially our vector database. But in this example, I'm going to be saving it directly uh, to our machine locally. So we're not gonna be reaching out to any third-party vector database in this, just to keep it simple. So you can just npm i langchain and node, just like that. Okay, so once you have that, you can go ahead and make dir an output. And actually, while you're at it, you can make dir an images folder. So within the images folder, this will be what you actually embed. In this example, I'm gonna be showing you a handful of images. So a couple pictures of Steve Jobs, a parrot, you know, Apple products, a few different animals, just to be able to run some tests with the actual model itself. Okay, so once you have that and you filled out the images folder, you can go ahead and touch the index.js here, and you'll have this uh, a JavaScript file that you can work through. So I have these comments here just to be able to try and keep it clear and concise as I go through bit by bit everything that I'm gonna be showing you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the required module. So we're going to be requiring FS and path to interact with our local file system. And then we're going to be importing three different modules from Langchain. So we have the experimental uh, Vertex AI multimodal embeddings. We have the Facebook AI similarity search. And then we also have the document module we'll be loading in. So then we'll just simply initialize the Vertex AI multimodal embeddings. We'll set up a path for where our vector store will be saved. So this will create a folder called vector underscore store, and there will be a dot index file and a dot JSON once this has all been saved. 
Then from there, we're gonna have a, a few helper functions just to keep this clean and for you to be able to grab these pieces as you see fit. Uh, these are essentially helper files you could export uh, and use if you're trying to set up something similar to what I'm showing you here. So the first one is just to clear the directory. So I'm gonna be saving the images to the output just so you'll be able to have a different um, place to look at the outputs that's not just within the console. So say if you want to actually see those uh, images output uh, back within the folder, we're going to be encoding them within base64 uh, within um, the process of when we actually create and save the vectors. So we'll be able to just reach for them and save them as we see fit uh, out um, as we run through this. So the next two functions, we're going to have an add image function, and then we're going to also have one to add text. They're very similar, but there's some slight differences. And essentially what it's doing in the add images is we're going to read the image path that's being passed in within the argument. We're going to actually embed that image at uh, Google's uh, endpoint. Then we're going to encode it within a base64, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of metadata. So just an ID, the media type, and then also the path. And then we're going to add it within our vector store, and then we're just gonna log it out. So next, we're also going to have a function for text, like I mentioned, essentially the same thing, uh, you know, specifying a different uh, media type, and there's a little bit of a different method, as you see here. So we have embed image query, and this one we're just going to be embedding query, um, but essentially doing the same thing. Then the next two functions, similar to the first two, so we have one for image similarity search, and then we have one for text similarity search. What we're going to do within here, we're gonna first clear the output each time that they're run. Uh, so the output is only ever gonna be the most recent outputted, uh, output files uh, that were generated. And so we're going to, again, log things out just so it's super clear what's happening. We're going to read the file path. We actually have to embed that image that we want to query our vector database. So say if you have uh, a picture of a dog that you want to run a query against your database, you'll have to first embed it. Once you've embedded it, you can actually run the similarity search vector with score. This will return uh, the data we're looking for as well as the score of the similarity. So I'll likely mention this again, but the similarity score, the lower the better essentially, or maybe a better way to put it, the lower the score, the more similar those um, those files are. So there's like a higher relatedness between those two things. So we'll log it out. Then we also have a, a little helper function, which is essentially like a, a fancy console log just to be able to show all the different examples. So similar, just like the other one, we're essentially doing the same thing except with text here. So we're passing in text and we're going to be uh, embedding that and then looking for results. Then this is the fancy print result function. We don't need to worry about this too much. It's essentially just giving us a nice output for the console and it's going to give us slightly different information depending on whether it's an image or a piece of text. Then we're going to, we just have a, a little nice quality of life thing here where if the vector store exists, so if that directory exists, it's only going to run the query and embeddings of the new items. So it's not gonna run through a list of a ton of different items. If say you have 100 images, it's only going to embed the subsequent images or pieces of a text that you're trying to query the vector database against. So from there, what we're going to do is this is going to be where we actually add all of our different files. So we're going to specify a number of different images. I'm not going to specify all of them because I want to save some of them for when we actually query the vector database itself. Then we also have a little bit of generated text here to throw in there. And then essentially we're just looping through all the images, adding them one by one. Once the images are done, we're gonna loop through all the pieces of text and add those to our vector store one by one. And essentially we're just gonna wait for this function uh, to complete. 
And then once it's completed, we'll be able to perform our similarity searches, which I'll go through uh, in a bit more detail here. And then finally, we'll be able to just save out our vector store. So once you have that, you can just go ahead and save, and then you should be able to just node index.js. And you'll see it's gonna start going through our array. So it's embedding dog. And depending on the size of the image, it will take longer, as you might expect. So you see it's going through dog, cat, parrot, iPhone, just looping through all of these. And then it's going to output all of the different queries that we have here, but I'm going to actually go through them one by one. So the thing with the similarity search and for both image and text is we have the path and then we have the number of results that we have. So if I just go ahead and clear our console here and I just run this again, so in this example, I'm running the query of dog2 to be embedded and compare it against everything which is in the vector storage here. So as you see here, we have a similarity score of 0 0.75 and it's comparing these two things. So if I just pull up the one within the vector store within the one that we passed in, you can see that arguably it got the most related image to what was passed in. So now if I go and perform another similarity search and I pass in a picture of Steve Jobs, which I'll just pull up here. Now in this example, I asked for three results. And the interesting thing with this is I got the first result as a different picture of himself, picture of AirPods and a picture of an iPhone. So I found this interesting and arguably this is what I would find most similar, um, at least for the images. So the thing with uh, the images, you know, we have dog, cat, parrot, and it went and reached for these few things from that initial image um, instead of others. So I thought that was pretty neat. So and similar, if we just pass in our photo of an Apple store, we'll see, okay, now the order is, is it's the same results as above, but you see the order is different. Um, so in this one, we're getting AirPod and iPhone and then Steve Jobs last. So arguably that is also most similar. Now, the thing that I noticed when setting this up is when you have text and images here, let me just run an example the results that you get i found more often than not is if you have text results that you're querying uh, and embedding off the bat is it's more likely to return those text results in uh, the uh, most similar examples that it or that it, that it thinks are, are, are similar here so if i just bump this up and say i want the 10 most similar things and i say dogs so we only embedded three pieces of text and you see those are all at the top, but then in terms of uh, dogs itself, uh, we have dog as the fourth example. So uh, this is still very new, but I found that there is a bias towards if you're embedding text and then you're querying for text, hoping you'd get an image, that there is that, um, that consideration that it does seem to weight text responses higher. So I'll just run the Apple example here. And similar, you see here, we have all the text results. So arguably Apple Inc, uh, you know, we wouldn't want dogs are domesticated animals. Like arguably we'd want uh, one of the other Apple products, right? So interesting to think about how this works under the scenes. I'm curious if anyone has uh, um, had better luck when, you know, embedding both uh, images and text and then trying to get images from text. That's the one thing that I found uh, to not work as well. Now, the thing to also mention that you could try is let's say we delete our vector store and then we also delete 
where it's adding in text and we just add in images. So let's just clear this and run this again. So it will re-embed all those images right from scratch. And then we'll just ask it at the end for a similarity search of just Steve Jobs. So just to reiterate, it's there's only images, right? So hopefully we, you know, or we not hopefully, we won't be able to get a text response. So it'll be interesting to see just based on the text, which image is result or which image uh, uh, is, is provided to us. So you see here, we have our Steve Jobs image. And now if I try dogs with only having the images embedded and I ask for, let's just say three results. We can see we have dog, Steve, parrot. So it sort of gets a little strange, right? Um, but it did get that um, image when I passed in that, that dog's query. So hopefully you found this useful. It's still very new. So uh, it, it's experimental both within Langchain and it's still within a preview within Google. I thought I'd show you this early so you can get your hands on playing around with this if this is something you're interested in. But as always, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise, until the next one.